Katarina Nash. Welcome to our beautiful studio here. Uh, thank you for sitting down. We wanted to talk a little bit about just beyond the bike. People know your racing pedigree. They've seen you race here in North America for the last few years. Um, but you have a pretty unique story of how you got not only into cycling, but just into sport in general. So can you maybe tell me just where you were born, what kind of growing up was like there, and how you first got introduced to just sports and athletics in general? Um, so I was born in Czechoslovakia, which doesn't even exist anymore. It split into two countries, so um, now I'm from the Czech Republic, but I was born in Czechoslovakia, and uh, it was one of the East European countries, communist country, and honestly, like, uh, for me, the only thing to do in Czech Republic growing up was to do sports. Like, I didn't have much else going on, and uh, a lot of parents volunteer with all the athletic clubs, and uh, so I did about you know anything: gymnastics, skiing, running, track and field. Just always was sort of a outdoor kind of kid, and didn't care much about reading. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so I, I've enjoyed it since young age, and um, really got into competition with cross country skiing and later on into cycling. Were you somebody that excelled right away? I, I mean, did you know from very early on, like, oh, this is something that I'm really good at and that I want to pursue more than just something that's a recreation? Yeah, actually, you know, back, back then when I was starting to get into uh, racing, there was still that East European structure in place where they definitely monitored athletes mm -hmm. uh, locally. Then they start, you know, sort of, um, inviting them to regional training camps or competition and from there you could make it to the national team. Even at, so your, even at a young even age? Even at like, even at, you know, like end of the elementary, elementary school, I was already wow. part of a system that, you know, that I could take advantage of and I did, you know, I went to sport gymnasium, so I skied uh, six days a week and I went to school one day a week throughout the entire high school. And uh, that sort of gives you competitive edge, you know. Sure. So by 18, I was, you know, I was already pretty, um, not established athlete, but definitely had a lot of serious training in my legs. And that, that seems like something that maybe would give you a competitive edge, but it seems like it could also be not fun or, or that it could be something that you could do for a few years. And I mean, we see it all the time with like junior racers who just who do too much that it, it can burn out. How did you go last through that? Uh, well, I, you know, I definitely was surrounded by great people um, that made it more of a fun environment at a younger age. But having said that, you know, by the time we finished high school, most people moved on and just went to college and never mm -hmm. ski raced again. And so I, I don't know, I just, I still was in that same zone where I was like, man, this is the most fun I can have mm -hmm. is, you know, running around the mountains and skiing. And so I didn't go to college at first. I actually ended up going to college in the United States, which kind of that's how I end up here. So how did you, I mean, we're a cycling show. So we're going <laughs> we're, we're gonna to skip over a lot of great ski stories here. <laughs> yeah. but, but you ultimately you were a very successful skier. You went to the Olympics as a skier. Um, but then how did, uh, I'm sure you rode bikes as training, but how did cycling become uh, a competitive sport for you? How did you transition into doing that at a high level? So I, I mean, as a cross country skier, yeah, you spend a lot of time on the bike in the summer and I always, I always liked it. And then in the early nineties, when mountain bikes sort of start appearing, even in Czech Republic, I was like, this is cool. How do I get this bike? And I think I started saving money, you know, <laughs> and it was going to take forever. <laughs> but, um, one of our coaches at the ski academy, uh, actually helped a bunch of us get on the team and we got free mountain bikes and I was around nice. 16 and I went and did my first race and it was a pro race because there was no junior category there was no U23 none of that and I entered the pro race because I was skiing on high levels so just that's what they signed me up for and I ended up winning my very first race and I was like this is cool and you know I just enjoyed mountain biking ever since so I did it um, Somewhat seriously, it was part of my summer training, you know, I was a ski racer, but I did have a lot of success early on. I was a silver medalist at the Junior World Championship in mountain biking, and then I actually went to my first Olympic as a mountain biker. 
before I even went skiing. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so you had and so you go from skiing to mountain biking, and then even within cycling, cyclocross is is such a small sort of uh, niche discipline. When did you first discover that area of cycling? So when I like to back up a little bit more, I I you know I. I came to the United States on skiing scholarship and halfway through the university I was done with my eligibility and that's when I wanted to really focus on cycling because I never done that up to that point I never really ridden my bike in the winter or raced that much so I was lucky enough to get on the Luna team in 2000 and raced mountain bikes for a few years and then a few years later uh, when Georgia Gould came on our team she was already racing cyclocross and uh, it was around the time that part of the team was moving on to Xterra, and mm -hmm. I was like, don't want any of that. I'm going to go with Georgia and do cyclocross. And, uh, yeah, I think Gloucester was my very first race. And uh, it was, you know, I was already, like, cyclist for a good six years and pretty focused on mountain biking. And I finished my first cyclocross race, and I was like, man, I haven't had this much fun on a bike in a long time, and this is what I want to do. And that's... It really all started there, you know. I grew up watching cyclocross in Czech Republic on TV. Right. Never, never had a chance to do a women's race, you know. They didn't have them back then. And so when I had the opportunity to do it and finally tried, I was like, "This somebody made this sport for me," you know. <laughs> yeah, you had. I mean, you you had great success as a mountain biker, but especially even over the last five years. I mean. It, I don't know, it doesn't really matter which you prefer, but in cyclocross, you did really well. I mean, you were, you were a consistent threat at the World Cup and at the World Championships. And in North America, uh, you know, you, you were, you know, you dominated with the exception of Katie Compton, who's, who show up every once in a while. But what, what is it about cyclocross as a discipline that you feel like suits you as a rider? I think it goes back to cross-country skiing where the distance is a little bit shorter, you know, because... I was like so used to doing anything from 5 to 10 to 15K. Right. Uh, 15K being kind of the closest to cyclocross race, around 40 minutes. So I ha always had that intensity. I always did really well in the short track mountain bike races. Mm -hmm. You know, that was 25 minutes, just that kind of all-out power. Uh, and the other thing about cyclocross that I really like is it's, it's very dynamic, you know. Things are changing constantly, and that's also similar to skiing. So I feel mm -hmm. like I had a really good training had a lot of running miles training for cross-country skiing. So all these elements combined together uh, just really suited my style. And I, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I love to ride mountain bike. But as far as racing, I, I typically have the most fun during the cross season. <laughs> Especially this fall or back in September, there was a lot of talk about, is Katarina going to race anymore? Is she going to retire? You won your first World Cup as a mountain biker. It was like, it could, it could have been the perfect ending for you to, to step away, um, but you, you continue to race, you continue, you, you decided to, to keep going. Um, looking back on what you've already accomplished, is there anything still out there that is keeping you going, or, or is it just the love of the sport that you just, you, you wouldn't <laughs> rather be doing anything else? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of had plans to, um, to hang it up after this season, but halfway through the summer, I was like, man, this is, I'm still having so much fun. What yeah, when you're, I... when you're so good, when you win a World Cup, did that, <laughs> in your head, was that saying like, oh, this is great, I'm finally doing that, now I can stop? Or did, it, or did that kind of switch it in terms of, mm, I, maybe I should keep doing this? It actually, it, it's, it helped me to switch it back to like, um, you know, I still like the sport. Uh, there are a few, few things that I want to accomplish, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I just I just mainly wasn't ready to quit cold turkey, you know. Yeah. So I was able to come up with a little transition where I'm still racing a lot, um, just maybe not every weekend like a lot of people. And I probably bring the similar attitude to the mountain biking where I won't be at every World Cup, but I'm gonna show up for a few and I'm gonna be ready. When you when you ride <laughs> when you're riding so well this fall, we, we've said in some of our other shows, but you, you've gone up against Katie Compton five times this year and you've, you've walked away four of those times with a victory. And that's, I mean, that doesn't usually happen with anybody going up against uh, a rider who's leading the World Cup and is one. When, when you're having a season like that and results, how do you stop yourself from booking that plane ticket to the World <laughs> Cup? And I mean, when, you're, when you can be that competitive, is it really hard to, to step away? 
Uh, well, not really. You know, like I, um, we are a mountain bike team. Luna Pro Team is heavily focused on mountain biking, yeah. and uh, we definitely had uh, quite a few busy years. You know, and personally, I've. I've gone to both world championships last four years, and yeah. so you're looking at racing 10 months out of the year, right. which is quite a bit. So it's it's a lot of focus. So I, I really enjoy this year's cross, just racing domestically and challenging the people that are, you know, winning World Cups and doing right. really well. And we have an incredibly strong field in North America, so I'm not really missing that, you know, highest league because I Every race I came out to this year, it's it's been competitive. There are different people mm -hmm. that are challenging, you know, the the leaders, yeah. and so it's uh, yeah, it's quite okay. I'm actually having a lot of fun, not racing every weekend, and just like picking and choosing races that you know I haven't had chance to do back in the day when you like so heavily focus on the world championship or the races in Europe. So it's it's been a good mix and. Uh, I am making the best out of my choices. <laughs> so it's obvious that as long as you want to race, you'll be able to race. You'll always have a team with Luna. You'll, you'll always be competitive. At some point when you do decide that you are, you're going to stop doing it as your profession, what does Katarina Nash do? What what does post bike racing look like for you? You must have thought about it as you start to yeah, wind down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been kind of working on it for a little while, and uh, I am... Um, uh, my plan was kind of start working for Cliff Bar. I have a marketing degree, but uh, since I'm going to continue racing next season, um, the full-time position sort of shifted more into internship kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I'll be I'll be definitely around Cliff Bar office next summer, uh, next spring, uh, starting to sort of gain a little bit of experience, and hopefully that will lead to. Uh, yeah, marketing position. Of Cliff Bar. So that means you're the person that everyone calls now when they want free Cliff Bars. Uh, not quite yet, but maybe <laughs> one day. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Good luck with the rest of the weekend, with the rest of the season. I know we'll see you uh, out in Bend, Oregon. We'll see you in L.A. And uh, good luck. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you.